Um, again, so it's going to get to its process. I'm going to load my I.O. Go over here, load this in here. I'm going to hit exit, start and exit. Now I'm connected. I am connected to my OPC driver. I come over here, toggle the bit, and we are back running. So that's how easy this is to, to actually get working, right? And that's some of my best practices that I'm you know, trying to develop because when you're using any kind of software, you want best practices so you can fully understand how to program. But you're teaching yourself with these cool examples that e Easy PLC has. So I really wanted to kind of share this and how this process can work, right? All right, so I'm gonna show you my best practices on the Easy PLC machine simulator. And this is gonna be, again, working with Studio 5000, and this is gonna be working with the Studio 5000 Logix Emulate to get the whole process working together, right? Using an OPC topic through our RS Links uh, Classic. So with all this said, I'm gonna show you my best practices on getting this functional. Now I'm gonna actually run this real quick and show you that the process does actually work. So this is fully functional and fully working on this system. So as this works, let's go ahead and watch the process work real quick. So also, I wanna sh uh, actually share with you too how to get your, your window sizing the correct way because I can go full screen on this or I can actually go par partial screen so I can share um, basically what we're doing and how things are working, right? And just keep in mind, this stuff is actually fully functional off of the PLC code. So with this said, you'll come back in here and you'll, this is basically a, a very, very simple state machine that I did. So it's basically moving one state to another when the situation is actually occurring, right? So how does it, how do, I mean, how does it work, right? How does it all tie together? Let's go ahead and answer that question. So I'm going to hit restart real quick. And at, I hit the restart, I'm going to hit exit. I'm going to cancel that out and I'm going to exit the screen. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to get the screen the proper size. You come up here to the gear icon when you open up machine simulator, right? You open up the gear icon. You can change your resolution. You can change your quality. If you want to have it a better quality, um, you can change a whole bunch of stuff with this. This is your settings page, right? So you come up here. I, I currently have it set to, you know, uh, 1024, basically just for the simple fact of showing where I can make it widescreen or I actually have it with side by side of the actual PLC code. And then whatever you do, you hit apply. Um, obviously too, you have graphical settings you could change right here to make things work better with your system depending upon how good your graphics card is or depending upon how good your computer is responding and stuff of that nature. So there's a plenty of options. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm going to show you right here. You can demo it and see how exactly it works, right? We showed you that in the last couple of videos. If you have not seen those, please go back and watch those. Those are in the playlist that we have on this channel. Um, that shows you the way we actually can, you know, demo the projects. We can see how they work, how, how to get the scope of work on, on basically layouts. Let's actually load this real quick and I'll show you another way, right? So real quick, you can see where we open it up. Now I want to show you too, if I go to view IO, real quick, I can actually start functionally turning things off and on. The outputs are over here on the left hand side, the inputs are over here on the right hand side. So keep this in mind, watch stop number one, you see the stop come up, stop number two, you see the stop come up. Now this, we're going to turn on the conveyor, and as we turn on the conveyor, we're going to then load the actual motor is going to come out, and then we're going to have the crate come out that the motor is going to go into. Now I'm just showing you this so you can see how the process works, right? How do you actually get the scope of work, right? When you start programming, you're doing your ladder logic, or you're doing your your PLC programming, you want to know how does this how does this how is it supposed to work, right? But when it comes down to it, you can do the demo and understand how the demo works. But coming in here for me personally, like actually getting and pushing the button and seeing what the function is, really, really, really helps. So I'm going to restart this real quick. And we're going to come in and restart this. We're going to come in and exit this real quick. Let's exit and cancel. Now, in this environment, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, load our OPC driver. So I currently do have an OPC driver that I'm looking at my OPC topic. And it is actually robot cell right here. It's pointed to the emulate 5000. 
Okay, let's come in here and let's link this stuff up. So what I've done to save time, and this is a really, really cool feature, is you go to you go to File and Open, and then I've pre-configured this actual robot cell. Right, then I'm gonna load it up, and you can see I don't have to drag and drop anything anymore. I don't have to do anything. I, it's completely loaded up. I can go into configuration and load different stuff up if I want to, but you see the OPC is pointed to the actual robot cell. Now I've shown you that in um, the RS Logics, and it also has this inputs and outputs already laid out. With that said, you hit accept, and then you have to load everything, right? So if I did that, come over here and I hit accept, then I got then I come over here and just simply drag all this stuff over. It's just that easy. And at my point, what I've done is I saved the configuration. So I'm going to come over here, load this up, and then all of it's pre-done. So it saves you time when you're actually, first you can go and do your layout, and then you can come back and do your programming and make sure your programming is good. So at that point, you hit exit, and then you're going to go to stop or start driver and exit. At this point, when you see it connected, we're going to go to RS Links, pop RS Links back open, and see DDE OPC. I'll look at the topic configuration, and we should be locked to our actual topic, and we are. So we have good conductivity. We have everything tied in properly. So with that said, now we can come over here, link our IO right here, and easily look at this. So in the environment that we're currently working in, right? So let's go ahead and minimize this so you can see it and get the view I, um, IO off of it. So we're gonna start this process and start running just like we did before. Okay, so everything is currently working. So we're gonna come over here and let's actually watch this too. So we can watch the code, but we can also watch the inputs and outputs that are currently on. So what should happen is you're gonna have your inductive sw switch come on right here for the motor is present. And then when this crate hits here, your second inductive switch is gonna come over here, letting you know it's okay to drop it. It's okay to load the part, right? And then it's gonna exit the part out. Then the process will repeat itself. Now, again, when it comes over here, I want to show you the, the I.O. to that for a simple fact of let's load that, lower that back down. And now you, you kind of see how it works. So if I hit the start button one more time, I want you to watch this inductive switch right here. OK, we're going to start the process. As, as soon as the process goes to the next, I'm going to well, let's just let, let it run. OK, so it goes to the this inductive switch right here is going to let the robot know it's okay to take the part as soon as the engine gets to that stop. So as soon as it does that, it actually goes down, picks the part up, and then it moves on to the next state. The next state is coming in here, and then it's going to load that in there, and then it uses that second inductive switch right here where the crate gets to the actual next stop that's when it's going to tell the robot it's okay to load that motor in there and then release it so there's a clamping feature on the robot as well that actually does that right so we have inputs coming back from the easy plc machine simulator and telling us what we you know how things are actually operating so we're not just assuming that this is happening we actually have real world io working on this right so you see that inductive switch happened and the product or the robot detect is what we were looking for right so when it comes in here and I'll show you this when it goes widescreen okay what we're looking for is we're gonna look at the robot detect and the robot stopped so we're those are two inputs we're getting back from the robot saying what kind of status are they so the robot stopped is obviously the robot not moving the robot detect is showing that the product is is actually clamped into the actual tool that's when it's going to actually allow you we can use that that information to actually program the plc logic from there right so we want to make sure we're doing that properly and you can see again how this stuff is functioning i'm not controlling any of this the actual plc file is controlling every bit of this so when this second inductive switch gets here this is the cart coming up to this prox or this uh not prox but stop right here you can see that when it comes up to that that actual stop it's gonna make and it made then it came over here loads the part and after it loads the part it comes up here we raise the robot back up and now we're back to state zero 
where we home the robot first. We come over here, wait for this first inductive prox or inductive switch to make, which is the robot or the, the engine getting over here. As soon as the engine gets below the robot and it gets to the stop, it's going to make that inductive switch. That's what we're using for our input to control basically our in inputs and outputs to actually work, make the process work how it should. Right, so it's a very powerful, powerful tool, right? So I, what I wanted to do is actually kind of show you this and show you how to rescale it, show you how to size it, show you how, to, how I'm using the best practices of this to actually see how the process is working. Now in my environment, if I now I've chosen not to have a recovery yet because I just basically I programmed this uh, logic in really, really simple. So what I do is I turn the stop off and then let it finish its process and then it will not transition anymore into the system after that. So this would be like a like a basically like a grade change or, or empty the system. This is emptying the processes out so that when that last motor comes out, the start bit come it, the start bit is not high. And basically, what it's going to do is it's going to sit there idle. Okay, so watch. At this point, we're going to sit there idle. It's just going to sit in state zero. Now it, it's uh, in state zero right now. If I hit the start button, it comes over here. Then it homes the robot first then it starts the process all over. Now again, I just wanted to show you that because I don't I didn't have a built-in recovery in case there was a problem. I went in and you know, basically programmed this real quick within the last hour to see how it was actually done, right? So looked at how the demo worked, compared it to what I should do, played with the inputs and outputs to get the process of operation and then got it working. So I wanted to share all that with you because it's again best practices on how to actually load a pre-configured driver. And that's loading that pre-configured driver on the Easy PLC's machine simulator. So we're using part, this is like a two-part software, Easy PLC. If I exit this real quick, so I'll exit and I'll show you this full screen so you get to see this. So Easy PLC has a lot of these pre-done templates. I've shown you two already, right? One real simple, one another, another one where it showed the box and the pusher. I've showed you the robot one. Oh, we're going to do a lot more of these, but when it comes down to it, this is not factory IO, right? This is machine simulator, which was done way before factory IO and actually has a lot more features to it. You can actually build your own stuff, right? So when it comes down to it, you can build your own stuff, come down here and then uh, run your code and then so you can build your own machines right you got a home you can easily see some of the stuff at home you got tutorials uh, stuff of that nature you have ability to resize stuff and then that's also linking that in with the easy PLC software so you get easy PLC right here if you don't have any programming software at all right so let's just say you don't have studio 5000 or you don't have uh, Siemens or any other brand like CodeSys or anything like that if you want, you can actually run Easy PLC just like I'm starting up right now, and you'll see that you can actually program all this stuff from scratch. So this is the Easy PLC. We'll open up a project just to show you that there's projects preloaded when you purchase this actual software to give you an idea of how this stuff works. Let's load this in here, and let's do this. You can see how the ladder logic works. So it's a very simple process. And again, this is very effective when it comes to, like, let's just say, not everybody has the software. Not everybody has, you know, Studio 5000. Or not everybody has, um, you know, one of the major brands uh, like Siemens and stuff of that nature. So this is another tool that you can use if you don't have anything. Now, this is very effective and very helpful because, again, you can program the systems just like we just did and I'll show you just how easy it is to get this back up and running um, again so it's gonna get to its process I'm gonna load my IO go over here load this in here I'm gonna hit exit start and exit now I'm connected I am connected to my OPC driver I come over here toggle the bit and we are back running so that's how easy this is to to actually get working right and that's some of my best practices that I'm you know trying to develop because when you're using any kind of software you want best practices so you can fully understand how to program but you're teaching yourself with these cool examples that e easy plc has so i really wanted to kind of share this and how this process can work right well, with that said if you are interested in easy plc or machine simulator 
it is a one-time fee but you do get a discount if you just email me uh, there's a you can email me and say you you just are interested in the software and you want you're interested in that discount then it's a one-time fee very cost effective a lot a lot better than anything I've seen on the market so far but again with this type of training with the ability that easy PLC gives you to actually program learn and grow from right you can see real world processes how they work and how they should work so with that said if you're interested click the link or just basically email me there is no link to click I'm um, sorry but uh, just email me that you're interested my email will be below in the show notes and just email me and, and let me know you're interested and I'll be glad to uh, you know talk with a developer we'll get you a discount and you can have the software as well get this stuff be easily running I plan on making a lot of lot more tutorials on this stuff and actually sharing drivers as well so um, just to kind of give you the base principle but I always recommend you build this stuff from scratch yourself not just because that's the way it should be done or, or you know people don't want to share with you you get the best experience when you actually do it yourself so when you understand how to set up your OPC when you understand how to do your your ladder logic when you get the, the two systems to work together and communicate you can do just about anything in the in the real world or in the field right so this is a, a process that you can see easily works again if you're interested uh, shoot me a, a email I'd be glad to help you out I'd be glad to get you that discount and uh, again we'll see you guys on the next one